Are we good? Is it is it safe to show up now? Can we talk about this and be rational about it? Because I had to wait a couple of hours to let people cool down. Because I know people was going crazy. They were like, ah, fire ADC and all that. Like, Whoa. Hold on now, buddy. I get some frustration, but let's still be reasonable about it. So uh, the trade deadline came and went, and the Baltimore Ravens, they did not do a thing apparently they were interested in some people apparently they made some phone calls and whatnot and they were interested in some positions where i was like oh okay now i ain't mad at it but um nothing got done and i know for me personally um i was not mad that nothing got done but i was a bit disappointed now y'all have continued to hear me say and i still do believe it i said it before the trade deadline i say it after i do feel like the baltimore ravens they are a good enough team to win the Super Bowl. I feel like they're a good enough team with how they are, especially if they get even healthier because they still got guys coming back. Uh, but I feel like they're a good enough team now to win. But I certainly was not and will never be against adding more talent. And I really felt like they were going to add more talent. I mean, I feel like us as Baltimore Ravens fans, especially over the past couple of years, we have been spoiled uh, almost at the trade deadline when it's come to whether the trade deadline or really just every year with Eric DaCosta usually making a move, usually making a trade or whatnot, acquiring somebody who makes a uh, big impact on the team. So going into this trade deadline, I figured, oh, yeah, it's going to happen for sure. I mean, Eric DaCosta, he even talked about it early on this season. Like, yeah, we, we want to be active all up until the deadline and whatnot. So I'm like, all right, EDC, I'm looking forward to it. But we just we didn't end up seeing anything. Uh, we saw Chase Young go to uh, the 49ers for a third round, conditional third round pick. And I was like, oh, okay. We saw Montez Sweat go to the Bears for a second round pick. Oh, cool, 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 cool. Um, but Daniil Hunter, he stayed with the Vikings. I was like, oh, okay. If he ain't going to the Ravens, I don't want him going nowhere. He could stay in that purple. And then we'll, we'll talk next year when he's a free agent. But anyway, um, I just really thought that the Baltimore Ravens were going to do something, and they didn't do anything uh at all um but this is not a bad team we, we, we cause context is important and i mean you don't even need a crazy amount of context to realize why they're fine um because they're, they're six and two they're six and two and if you watch the games you could see how they could have easily been now i don't like the whole coulda woulda shoulda and oh if this happened if x y and z happened then this would have been i don't like that but you could, if you watch the games, you could see how this team could easily be eight and zero. They could easily be eight and zero if they weren't their own worst enemy. If they cleaned a lot of stuff up, especially earlier. Oh my goodness, they will be rolling right now. But again, with all the issues that they've had, with all the problems that they've had, they're sitting at six and two. And while we would have loved that they would have got even stronger by adding somebody of some significance to this football team, but. They didn't, and now we, we got to move on. Now, something that I thought was interesting, something that Josina Anderson said before the trade deadline had arrived, she said, my understanding is that the Baltimore Ravens entered this process towards the deadline vigilant to the market at running back. So they wanted to add a running back, but it wasn't done there. Uh, pass rusher. So that's something that we figured too. Now, with the rumors about running back, we figured that they wanted to add one there. And then we, uh, with them, with pass rusher, we knew that too, with them wanting to, uh, them ta having talked to Nandamakin Sue. Uh, we knew that they wanted to add some more to the defensive line. But also, she said, even at wide receiver. And now that part, I was like, ooh, whoa, okay. Like, what would I wonder what the Baltimore Ravens were trying? What would they have attempted? Who would they have tried to get? Like, what was that about? Because I know a lot of fans have said it. Like, oh, Ravens should add a wide receiver. They should trade for a wide receiver. But I know, like, sometimes those fans, we just be talking. We want everybody. I know I want everybody. Y'all know me. I'm greedy. I want everybody. Um, but Josina confirming that the Baltimore Ravens, like, they really tried to trade for a wide receiver. They were looking at all of those options. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, but she said, though Pickens at that position, wide receiver, uh, are notably thinner. Yeah. Uh, we'll see how calls continue to evolve their overall interest. She said, obviously, the price has to be right for any potential trade prospects. Ravens are 6-2, and two, first in AFC North, and already in great position. But the goal is a championship, clearly. It certainly is. And, again, I do feel like they have already made enough moves to get there. But, yeah, one more move, even two more moves, it certainly would not have hurt at all. Um, now, 
we do have a couple of questions because you know team keep it clean that team keep it clean I always want to chime in on what's going on with the baltimore ravens first one came from my guy javo he said do you think if we had ozzy a deal would have been made um no not necessarily uh, Eric DaCosta has been a lot more aggressive than Ozzie Newsom. I know whenever people get frustrated with Eric DaCosta, not saying that you're doing it, Javo, but just using it as an example, whenever a lot of people get frustrated with something that Eric DaCosta does or does not do, first thing they do, oh, Ozzie Newsom, he wouldn't have done that. Oh, Ozzie Newsom would have done this. Oh, Ozzie Newsom would have got that done. As far as trades and stuff, acquiring talent like that, that wasn't Ozzie Newsom's big specialty, man. And it's funny because Jeff Zrebic, um, Jess Rebick let it be known too Because uh, somebody had tweeted him And they said Ozzy gets a deal done Man I don't know why I'm upset And Jess Rebick replied to that He said you can be frustrated and disappointed All of that But let's not talk nonsense here The Costa has made more relevant trade deadline deals In five years than Ozzy did in his entire time as the Ravens general manager. Ozzy's only real notable pre-deadline deal was trading for Eugene Monroe. And I was like, oh, I said, oh Jeff, Jeff, why you had to kill him like that? But again, Jeff is right. Like, and that's not a shot at Ozzy or anything like that. Of course, it's not a shot at Ozzy. He's got all the respect in the world for Mr. Ozzy Newsom. But Ozzy just moved a lot differently than Eric DaCosta has when it's come to uh, just building the roster, the way that they go about things, but especially when it's come to trades. Um, now, uh, another question came from my guy, Anthony. He said, first, hope you and your family are doing well. I appreciate that, Ant. And he said, second, how do you feel? Um, oh, excuse me. You know what? Back up, back up, back up. Because my guy, Javo, still has some more questions. Uh, he said, what deal did you want to happen? For me, um, I wanted the Neil Hunter. That was a deal that I wanted the most, but I wouldn't have been mad if they would have added a running back. I know there had been some talk about possibly them being interested in Josh Jacobs. Uh, and there were some rumors going around that, the Raiders wanted a second round pick for Josh Jacobs. Now, um, some people have said that the Ravens, uh, they weren't willing to give a second round. They weren't willing to give us up a second round pick in a trade period. Uh, but Jeff Zrebic, he cleared that up too. Because right here, um, Revolutionary Film Studios tweeted at Jeff. He said, while I agree with you, Jeff, about the Ozzie Newsom era, the Costa comment, he said, if the sources are true saying that the Raiders wanted a second round pick, then it speaks volumes. They haven't hit on a second round pick, the Baltimore Ravens, in a long time. I can see the frustration in fans, but also understanding that getting Josh Jacobs is only a rental. And Jeff cleared it up right here. He said, I don't spend a, a time debunking reports, but that one was not accurate. Uh, they weren't against trading a second rounder necessarily in the right situation. So Jeff letting it be known like, hey, Ravens, if they wanted to make a trade and they wanted to use a second round, they, they had no problem using a second round pick if, if it was to facilitate a trade, but it had to be for the right situation. I mean, and that's clearly easy to see because we, you look last year, Roquan Smith. They traded a second round pick and changed. They traded a linebacker, a second round pick, and I think either a fifth or sixth round pick to acquire Roquan Smith. So they sent a second and more just to get him. It obviously paid off immediately in a short and long term. I mean, we, we still reaping the benefits of that one. Um, so they show that they are willing for the right player, you know, right player, right price, Baltimore race. Yeah, but they show that they were willing to move off a second round pick for the right player. But Josh Jacobs apparently was not that. So with their running back situation, uh, Gus Edwards, Justice Hill, Keaton Mitchell, those are your guys. Practice squad on right. You got Melvin Gordon. Drake is gone now since the Ravens cut him from the practice squad like a week and a half ago, and then he just signed to the Browns uh, today. So that was that. And um, my guy Javo also said, would you have given the Ra – oh, I should have just read this. I didn't even see that he wrote that. He said, would you have given the Raiders a second round for Jacobs if you're not going to re-sign him? Uh, no, probably not. Um, I, I feel like with, with Josh – Josh Jacobs would have been nice. He would have been nice, but if you not planning on re-signing them, uh, no, nah, probably not, especially at the running back position. No, I, I, I probably wouldn't have done that. Um, so, anyway, next question came from my guy Anthony. He said, first, hope you and the family are doing well. And, again, yes, we are doing wonderful. Appreciate it. He said, second, how do you feel uh, – how do you feel – about the Ravens not making a trade. Me, I'm fine with it. And if people aren't, that's okay. You're right. Uh, we keep all our picks. And you know EDC likes to double dip in the first round. It also gives up an opportunity to trade up for a player when the new league year starts because we have a good amount of picks. Most of the running backs like Josh Jacobs, Dalvin Cook, and some others are on one-year deals and will be free agents. Do you think the Ravens made the right choice? Mm. 
That's a really, really good question, especially the way that you put it and the way that you phrased everything. Do I think the Ravens made the right choice um, uh, in not making any moves? I don't necessarily think it's the right or the wrong choice, um, but I would have preferred that they did add even more. Now, with the running back position, there's something that people have brought up, like, oh, what about Gus Edwards and his injuries that he sustained recently? And that is something to think about because uh, if – Hopefully he doesn't, but if Gus were to go down, then how would the running back situation be looking? Uh, Melvin Gordon and Justice Hill, and then Keaton Mitchell. Like, And we want to see Keaton Mitchell get more of a shot, and I'm sure that will happen over the next couple of weeks. But it's something that you got to think about, and it's something that a lot of people had thought about. Uh, and it seemed like the Ravens had thought about it too because apparently they were trying, but they just weren't able to get it done. So I, I – um. I don't necessarily feel like they made a right or wrong move, but I, I, I would have preferred that they did make a move to make a strong team uh, even stronger. Now, a lot of uh, one of the biggest ways that they can get even stronger, in my opinion, is just by playing better. Um, that's one of the biggest ways that they can get strong by playing better and, and getting healthier as well. Right now, you're missing still a good amount of guys. You, you're missing uh, Marcus Williams, who was your starting safety when he comes back. Ooh, we'll see about that. It may be an awkward conversation. maybe a humbling conversation, too. But you're missing Marcus Williams. You, Tyus Bowser, who knows? John Harbaugh did say things seem better with Tyus Bowser, but he didn't have an update. He doesn't know yet. So we'll see maybe tomorrow if we get an update on that. Um, you're still missing David Ajabo. So... You got those guys coming back. Pepe Williams, he said that. Uh, Pepe is close. He said Malik Ham, a linebacker, he's close. So strong positions for the Baltimore Ravens are looking to get even stronger in the coming weeks, possibly days, but definitely in the coming weeks. So that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Now, again, we – well, I can't speak for everybody, but I wish that they would have added even more via the trade, but – they didn't, but and, and that's okay. So now this is it. This is your team, and it's funny too. One 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 thing is uh, the Baltimore Ravens. I think 19 minutes after the trade deadline, so at 4:19 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, the Baltimore. <laughs> so many Ravens fans, they just knew it too. They knew it. I had tweeted out at three o'clock p.m. I'm like, all right, this is Eric DaCosta's hour. This EDC hour. What you, what you got for us, man? And cause I, I really thought that they were going to come through with something. I, I just knew Baltimore Ravens were going to make a deal. I, I just knew it. But they didn't, and the time came and went, and that was that. Um, but a lot of people replied to that even before it was 4 o'clock, and they were like, oh, no, nah, Ravens ain't doing nothing. Raven, Ravens ain't about to do nothing. And then a lot of people were, were tweeting out, whether it was a reply to my tweet or a reply to other tweets, they were saying, oh, we like our guys. We like our guys. Just – Sort of mocking John Harbaugh a bit when he says that, oh, we like our guys. Or when Eric DeCosta says that, we like our guys. And guess what the tweet said from the Baltimore Ravens that they put out at 4.19 p.m. Again, 19, 20 minutes after the deadline. They're, the tweet that they put out, it says the Ravens really like this team. So basically saying the same thing, we like our guys. So I, I thought that was funny. It was almost like the Baltimore Ravens was like trolling everybody a little bit. But um, some people said, oh, man, y'all done had this video edited for weeks, so y'all knew the Ravens weren't going to make a move. But, no, nah, it's, it's all good, man. It's just it's part of business, man. You, you could try. You're not always going to have successful deals. You're not always going to be able to push that last thing through that makes the deal go through and makes the deal complete to the other team. It does take two to tango. It takes two to make an agreement. It can't just be one-sided. And, hey, the Baltimore Ravens just they weren't able to get it done this year, unfortunately. Now, what I'm looking forward to, but at the same time not looking forward to, is hearing how they were close on somebody. We already heard how they were close on Derrick Henry. We heard some stuff about how they were talking to the Raiders about Josh Jacobs. But I'm, I'm, I'm waiting to see what else we end up hearing because you know it always happens. It always happens like this. We always hear about, oh, the Baltimore Ravens were this close to making a deal with X, Y, and Z, but this happened and it all fell apart. So, again, I'm just wondering if we're going to get any more of that coming soon. But something that y'all can get some more of is your own Varsity Jackets. If you want to, you can go to the link in the description. It's standwithusclothing.com. If you want 10% off these jackets like this, the, the purple and black one like I'm wearing, or the gray and black, or the white... All of them. You want 10% off, you use code engraving. Team, keep it clean. I love y'all so much. I appreciate y'all. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn your notifications on so you don't miss notifications like this, or videos like this, and news like this, and updates like this so you can know everything and more that's going on with your favorite football team, those Baltimore Ravens. I love y'all so much. I appreciate you, and we out.